Hello, I'm Denton Davidson, Senior Editor for Gold Derby, and I'm here with Emmy winner John Turturro, who plays Irving on Severance on Apple TV+. Uh, John, this is a unique story. It's a fascinating concept. How did you first hear about the series, and what was your first reaction to that script? Well, my agent got it, uh, Christina Fazdikas, and she, she thought it was interesting, and, and she said, you should read it. So I read the first couple. Uh, they only had, like, I think, two or three. Uh, and I thought it was a very original idea. I thought, wow, this is like about something. You know, I mean, everyone's had that idea of going to a job and saying, I want to go home. You know, I don't want <clears throat> to be to get to get over with. And that's obviously something that, you know, uh, happened, you know, to me when I was younger. And I realized oh, I got to find something that I that I don't feel that way about, you know, at all. Uh, and so uh, then I met Ben and Dan, uh, Ben Stiller and Dan Erickson, and we had dinner together. And I, I didn't really understand the character that much because I only had written a few. And, and I've only usually done like a, a limited series, but usually it's almost all written or, you know, usually is written or written. Uh, and uh, so they were talking me through it and they said, well, then you have, you have this, relationship with this person that you sort of connect to in, in this world, even though you're severed. And, uh, and I said, yeah, well, that would be really important who I would do that with. And they said, well, you know, I said, do you have any ideas? I said, yeah, I do. Um, I said, you know, uh, Chris, you know, Christopher Walken, I think, because uh, I, I love Chris and I love working with him. And it's easy to, uh, to, you know, to, to pass the ball back and forth with him. You know, and I, 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 I'm always surprised. I've directed Chris. And I've also admired uh, his work, you know, on stage and in film. And we just have a, we just, it's just a delight to work with him. So it's easy if you have a strong feeling towards someone uh, already as a person and they have a, an openness and, uh, you know, I use the word, and he really dances with his partners. So he said, well, do you think Chris would, would be open to it? And I said, well, I could give him a call. Okay, he's my friend and called him up and he said, well, if you're going to be with me. And then he, you know, and then he knew Ben for a long time and he knew Ben's parents. So, uh, so we, we worked it out. And that was like, I said, okay, if you have Chris, even though you don't have all the scripts, you know, then I'll, you know, take a, you know, take a shot. But I did think it was very, uh, original and right. and uh, and also i think in the in the filming of it i didn't really know adam or Britt or zach or tramel i mean, knew patricia a little bit but uh i didn't really know them that well so and we were during COVID, so we were still separated so it was interesting navigating that getting to know them and then having the scenes with chris which was always that was my first scene our first scene together chris and i that we shot was our both of our first day and so the awkwardness of the first meeting is also mm -hmm. the awkwardness of the first day but us still having that little twinkle you know between us uh uh, <laughs> uh, uh so that those scenes became sort of a a relief from the world of you know, what we were doing in some ways, you know, those were more, those were harder scenes to do because it's four people and you're in and out. And uh, so, uh, you, you know, it was, it just, it was what I expected. Not that I expected what happened, but I knew that it would be surprising, you know, uh, 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 between us because that's sort of, you know, uh, uh, how it is and I also thought it would be interesting to have a very formal character which it, that's how Irving was written then kind of letting the animal part of you the emotional part of you mm -hmm. even though the brain is separated the, you know you can use the word love or whatever that's an irrational part of us it's not rational you don't say well I like this person because of this you just you you connect you communicate you share you you know it's like uh, animals smelling each other and uh so that's something that interests me that actually people are able to connect in the world 
and we see so much disconnection, you know. So it's, uh, and, I, and I think you don't normally get to see people at certain ages discover something that's, that's constant in people, you know. Uh, and, you know, loneliness is a, is a, is a, is a difficult thing for anyone. So we're all, we have the hunger to, you know, to be with others. Is that what sort of pulled you into to Irving? Because he seems like when we get to know him, he's this very straight-laced person. So right. when this love interest comes along, first of all, it's, it's surprising that it's Christopher Walken, but it's also surprising that Irving is sort of discovering this sort of about himself. He's sort of learning, learning as he goes. Right. You know, what draws you into playing a character? You know, what, what makes you say, yeah, this is someone I'm interested in? Well, Dan wrote me a whole backstory and then I did a lot of research on it, uh, which I'm not supposed to talk about. Uh, <laughs> and the person who helped me with my research really gave me a lot of insight to where he would be coming from. Uh, and I thought, wow, okay. So how much of that bleeds through when you've been reduced to almost a childlike state, you know, in some ways. Uh, and uh, so I, I tried to, to let that inform what I was doing uh, and still be spontaneous, you know, with, within that uh, thing. And I think lots of people who try to control things or, or very organized, uh, you know, there's a part of them, there's a fear of, of, of the opposite of that, you know, and that is part of life and also part of the joys of life too, you know, that you don't control everything. Uh, and uh, I mean, directors who I've loved working with, they do do all this work, they prepare, they storyboard, and yet some of them are still open to surprise within the parameters of what they would like to do, you know? And some people want you to do what they imagined, which is never as much, the, the joy level goes down, you know, and uh, because, you know, you never know, you know, you never know, you know, so uh, I, I think what's interesting is if you feel like, well, I haven't really done that before, you know, uh, you know, once you've done a lot of really, you know, great texts, you know, and uh, I've done a lot of stuff on stage too, you know, you get a little spoiled that way, you feel like, you know, I, I know what's possible, you know? So you wanna make it as complicated yeah. as possible for yourself, which makes it interesting, you know? As, as an actor who's directed, I mean, you've directed multiple films um, and, and written, as someone who's been behind the camera, does it change things for you as an actor? Uh, does it make a difference for you when an actor is directing, like Ben Stiller? Like, does it, can you feel a difference or not really? Well, Ben was very, he's very energetic. And it's almost relentless in his, you know, keep in his exploration. And in some ways, he was trying to figure out well, what is the tone of this show, too. And but you still have to learn to work together because just because you're actors don't mean you have the same approach. And then you know you say, hey, listen, I like to do it this way, or I like to do. You you have to still learn about each other as people what you like. You know, some directors don't really want you to look at playback. So, I mean, I'm used to looking at it as a guide just to help me with if I'm doing a certain accent or this or that. But it, I've worked with a lot of actor directors and they're all different. Mm. I, can't, I cannot say that, oh, just because they're an actor, you know, uh, it, it's, it, it's really, it's the same. It's not, you know, Robert De Niro is different than Ben Stiller you know, it's different than Tim Robbins, you know, it, it, they're just different, they're different people. So uh, they understand some, they understand what it is, but it's a, a big difference when you're not in front of the camera, you know, and even, I mean, I've directed too, you, you have to remember like that person is in front of the camera, you know, and uh, so it's getting to know the person and what, and what their sensibility is and what their sense of, uh, uh, freedom is play, you know, and uh, uh, but I think eventually we, we we were able to connect, like, and then it was like okay, and it was I was able to 
to do less takes actually you know they give a variety of things in a sh short amount of time so uh it, it's everyone's a unique individual and that's the whole thing and you know when people go well, why do you work with the same person again sometimes you think well we, i know i like working with that person and i know that they trust me and i know maybe they'll they'll push me in a good out of maybe my comfort zone too you know so it's it's a very elusive thing i think uh, you just know when it happens you go oh this person's getting gets you know trust me a little bit and trust is earned you know so. did directing change you as an actor i mean because you know what they want on the other side a little bit more or like what is that more sympathetic at first the first okay. time i went back after direct the movie i felt terrible for the director I said, oh my god this poor person has so much on their shoulders i don't even want to ask them and joel cohen told me he said well that's your job is your job is to ask them to do that i said i know uh, but I don't like try to get into like, oh, how are they shooting it? I mean, sometimes people shoot a lot of coverage. Sometimes they don't, depending on how much money you have or, or, or whatever. But uh, uh, I don't want to step on the, their tone. You know, I mean, sometimes the way something's lit maybe is like, it's not my sensibility or something, but I don't want to go over there. I want to stay in my in my world there and I feel and also I try to I I think in the best when I'm when I'm working at my best try to connect to their brain in a way say well what is this person searching for and where can we you know connect with that you know what I'm saying and then you know to make a director laugh for example is a great thing you know you, you go okay they're, they're enjoying what I'm doing because you don't really have an audience and now people don't even stay on the set because they're in the in front of the monitor and it's much more lonely yeah. so it's nice when you you know someone giggles or something like that and uh it's all the, it's all in the unsaid things sometimes in the un, what is not said that you get a sense of that you know you have a lot of scenes with adam scott zach cherry and Britt lauer um that's kind of that main quad in that right creepy office space. Um, <laughs> what was it like just being on that set? And what was the dynamic between the four of you and, and, and that ensemble acting? I think at first everybody was covered, you know, with masks and shields and everything. It was really hard to get to know each other. Uh, and it's such a strange set. I mean, it's very evocative. And I think it's very uh, right for that world. You know, but it's the kind of world that I don't think I could last very long in personally. Mm. I just I like windows. I don't like fluorescent overhead lighting. I don't like the green. You know, but it was great for what we had to do. Uh, but it, it took us sort of a while to get to know each other, and then eventually there would be a green space where we were allowed later on after we got our vaccines to take our masks off and chat and things. So I thought Adam really gracefully, you know, carried a lot of the heavy lifting of the show. And he was very, uh, you know, generous and hardworking and really set a good, uh, you know, a good, a good tone when a person who has the most to do. Uh, and and Brit is, is really a, uh, a very uh, interesting and, and talented young lady, and uh, and Zach and I, I Zach and I, kind of like we we really we got along really well. Like, in, 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 you know, I, I got a kick out of him. You know, he's a really an interesting guy. So it it took a while, which was good actually in, in some ways because uh, you know we were all sometimes in separate scenes, sometimes together, and uh, uh, but it, it, it's. It's harder when you're doing things with four people, and then sometimes five. Would you know Tramel would come in a lot yeah. too, and and so we have a lot of inter. I have a lot of interactions with Tramel. His scenes were funny too. Yeah, and so uh, you know, I was just I was glad that I had someone that I knew, and, you know, with Chris, and and I had that too to balance all of those. But it got I think it got easier as it went along. You know what I mean? But I, I think you know uh, ensemble group scenes they're not so easy you yeah. know because the dynamic is created over time like in a classroom you know uh, 
you know, with little groups of, of students or whatever, you know, or workers. So. And the four of them, it's interesting because they work alone, just the four of them in that office. Um, and they start to uncover this puzzle and they all sort of play their own piece. Um, what, what do you think Irving serves? You know, what do you think his personality brings into that discovery or, or what they're looking for? Well, like I say, where his background is, there's it's obviously discipline and very formal and stuff. So I think when you have the person who has bought into everything uh, and saying that, you know, I believe, I believe in this, whether it's the government, uh, you know, a, a cult or religion, you know, whatever, military, whatever it is, uh, when that person starts to doubt it, that that's a that's a big yeah uh, a big crack you know because you've invested so much in who you are in that so uh so i think it's delineated dan and ben have delineated those characters one character is, is it's just happened and it, it obviously it, it hasn't taken out her rebellion rebellious quality you know the other person zach is you know has his own imaginative idea of who he is you know <laughs> and adam it's pretty clear what he's navigating you know a sense of loss and you know trying to you know he, everyone we know why adam did it but we don't know why the other people did it i mean i know why yeah. you know that i did why i did so uh uh but uh so i think they're different kinds of people and that's the way Dan wrote it, you know, but, but I do think it, when you have someone who is the, the, the person who's been there the longest and then says, hey, this is not right, you know, uh, that, that's a big uh, uh, chasm, you know, that happens or split. And so I think that's yeah. where he is in, in, in this, in, I guess, in this story. Um, a little off topic, I, I recently went to the Academy Award Museum. I got an opportunity to, to stop by there and there's this great Spike Lee exhibit about his, okay. his film career and it's been 32 years since you were in Do the Right Thing. Uh, yeah, that's, there's, you know. there's the poster right there. That's amazing. That's the, the con poster. <laughs> and it's, I mean, it's, it's so relevant still today. I don't know if that's good or bad but it's it's still so relevant um what was that like playing that role of you know the racist italian guy and you know what has that relationship with spike meant to you oh, I have a very close relationship with spike we're very good friends i think he would say the same thing we're born i think three weeks apart i'm, wow. I'm weeks older than he, than he is uh we have a lot of things in common I grew up in a black neighborhood. He grew up in an Italian neighborhood. Uh, I got to do the other side of Pino when I did Jungle Fever, you know, uh, mm -hmm. which was really nice to do. So I got to do two sides of that coin. But uh, you know, when Spike wanted me to ask me to be in the film, he had seen me in Five Corners. I, I thought, you know, the the character of the racist I thought was the more interesting character for me because I thought that's what the film was somewhat about. You know, uh, I think that is, you know, our original sin in this country. I think it's, we see it every day, unfortunately. And uh, I think, you know, the, the thing about that movie was it had a lot of humor in it too. and had a lot of kind of humanity and, you know, and it was very Aristotelian in the sense that it'll take place like on one day, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So I kind of knew when we were doing it, like the this, I said, something is happening on this set, you know? Uh, and, uh, you know, I guess art doesn't really change people, but it could certainly make them aware of things. It could sensitize you to certain things. It could say, oh, that kind of thinking leads to this, leads to that, leads to this. You know, I think the fear of other is, is paramount in life men being afraid of women, trying to control women. You know, people saying, I'm 
you know, I, I'm, I'm part of this group, you know, I was here, you know, well, how long were you really here? You know, you, I mean, my father came from Italy, so I'm like, in some ways I'm first generation, you know, I was born here, but, you know, many groups were not even considered Caucasian, you know what I mean? But then they became Caucasian, you know, and later on they, and so then they're saying, well, I'm, you know, it's my group against your group. And, you know, the tribalism, as we see across the entire world, uh, even with people who are very close, you would think, you, you know, uh, religion, race, religion, uh, uh, still there's this separation of one side of the street and the other side. So I think it's, it's something that I've done lots of projects on, uh, you know, whether it was a Holocaust film like, you know, um, Primo Levi, The Truce with Spike. And it's something that's still un, 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 sadly unanswered in a sense that, you know, are we going to go back to eugenics or something, you know, like say, well, these people are better than these people or superior and, you know, people don't realize that was taught like in Ivy League schools and things. So films like that or, or pieces, books or plays, I think are good if you can get people who are still forming to watch those things, to say, oh my goodness, you know, it, look at that and look where that goes, you know? And so that's a big part of my life, basically. I've done a lot of those things because of how I look. Yeah. It's as simple as that, you know what I mean? And, and because I'm in, interested in, in that, because I think it's endless, by the way. And we see, it's, we see this big cycle. Uh, you know, I like to read about history. I was a substitute history teacher many years ago. And it just, it just, it happens again. And, you know, I think the human animal needs to be uh, sensitized, like uh, tenderized, like when you're cooking a piece of meat okay, like, okay. on a daily basis. And I think every time we move further and further away from that, you know, I think sometimes our love of violence is connected to our lack of, uh, you know, empathy, you know, or, or even the human body, you know, uh, maybe, maybe if we saw more human bodies unveiled completely, maybe there would be less violence, like, and even in, in entertainment and mm -hmm. video games and everything. I think it's, there's something about violence is, I think it's great when you see the cost of it. When you see what it leaves, the trail it leaves behind. And I think a film like Do the Right Thing definitely touches on that. Well, John, it was a pleasure speaking with you today about Severance. It's on Apple TV Plus. Um, and, and thanks for talking about a little bit of your career history as well. Um, Audience are anxious, audiences are anxiously awaiting the continuation. Um, it was a huge cliffhanger at the end. So we're hoping it, it'll be back sooner than later. But anyway, thanks so much for taking time to, to talk with Gold Derby today. Have a, a lovely day, okay? All right.